Hi, my name is George Barbu. I'm with Epson Robotics. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to go through this. I'm going to try to show you guys the simulator and also teach a pallet because the pallet is very important. So if you want to put the pallet as close as you can to your, uh, to your uh, robot so you can reach all the spots. Yeah, maybe push it up against the, the, push it up against the tooling plate there. So what I want you guys to do is pull the marker out, put this in, so if, so if it's sitting horizontally, or just to show like we have a gripper there. Now it's pretty common, what kind of robot would I use if I had this exact application where I'm picking apart horizontally and I want to place it vertically? Which one, which one would you use, the scare or six axis? Scare with the rotary device on the end. If, if that angle is always the same, I'm always going 0 to 90 or 0 to 45, a scare with a little flip tool, it's, it makes your life a whole lot easier. Uh, since we don't have the flip tool, we just have our, uh, our handy dandy, I love this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bless you, bless you, bless you. All right, so what we're going to do then in our code, uh, we have our tool taught, but we're going to, I just want you guys to see the, the tool. What I want you guys to be aware of though is in your tool, we, we have that offset. There's a maximum offset. If you're starting to go above four inches, and I have a three kilogram robot with three kilograms more than four inch offset, my robot's starting to have a lot of uh, uh, moment of inertia on it that could flip out my uh, Z axis, my uh, rotational U. So again, think some guys, they design their, they have a tool offset, and they could be 12 inches offset. <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot of force to serve out that motor, even in high power, if I'm a 12 inch offset on the center line of a small spline, but people forget you got these engineers that are really smart and they forget, they go to school, but they forgot that, hey, 12 inches from the center line of something or six inches from the center line of something could easily translate into a whole lot of force on the center line of my Z-axis. So again, think that if I got a G3 robot, oh, well, well I'm within payload, I, I'm at three kilograms. Yeah, but if you're at six inches offset, three kilograms, that's a lot of weight that I, I got to accommodate. So uh, in our code, we're going to clean up the code here to have a little space. In fact, what we could do, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of uh, your program here, and you see this gray line here? We're going to type another function, and we're going to call it function uh, palette exp for, uh, or palette test. What we did is we just created another function. It's really a nice thing because you can have multiple functions up to 32 in, in, the, in the RC180. I could uh, then go to the top of my other function and copy the reset motor on acceleration, copy that. And paste it. Uh, maybe copy the integer and the cycle. Control C and paste that. All right, and then uh, uh, in, in this case, instead of doing a, a do loop, we could do a do while less than something. So let's see how many parts we got in this, uh, in this tray. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 by two, that's 24 parts, right? So we got a two by 12 tray, and we're gonna uh, hypothetically define a conveyor location. That conveyor location could be on the on the left hand side of the robot or something, depending on where you put your gripper, uh, where you put your tray. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in four space cycle. Are you guys familiar with the for loop? A for loop is really easy because it automatically indexes up or down. So it says four cycle equals one to 24. What that means is I'm gonna automatically go through cycle equals cycle plus one. I, have to, I don't have to increment it. I'm gonna type in palette, P-A-L-L-E-T. Type in palette, put your cursor on palette and hit F1. So type in palette, like I got palette typed there and hit F1. Has everybody done that? Okay, after you hit F1, you get the, the syntax, it tells you the help screen, it tells you exactly what palette does. 
right? It goes through a whole lot of detail. Every engineer clicks on example and goes to example. <laughs> so click on uh, the example and see what the example does. And then I'm going to my example. It says pallet number one, comma, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is defined by three, comma, five. And it shows me the example here is three, three rows by five, uh, actually five rows by three columns. Then the second line says jump pallet number one, comma, location two. So what we have to do is we have to, to copy those two lines, paste that in our code, and uh, edit that just ever so slightly. So we're going to copy those two lines. In my case, I don't have that help uh, in there. So I'll say pallet one, comma, uh, we'll call it uh, T1, T2, T3. And uh, you guys got to help me out because my help isn't, isn't working, isn't loaded. So what is it? Pallet, pallet one. What am I missing? Let me copy yours here. So go to example and it says pallet one, comma, P1. Okay, okay, then three by five. All right, that's. And then uh, in our case, it's two by 12. Is that it? Then jump, location, uh, uh, parentheses, it's pallet one, location. Instead of location number two, we're going to use our integer cycle. Is that the example? How is the example so show? It's jump pallet. Okay, jump pallet, then one comma two. But instead of, uh, we say jump pallet. Okay, so here we are then. So we got pallet number one defined by, uh, well, actually I got this wrong. So defined by T1, T2, T3. And it's a two by 12. So what we have to do is we have to go back to our, our robot manager. So go to robot manager. Oh, sorry. We're gonna go to our robot manager and teach T1, T2, T3. Basically we're gonna teach T1 is the left hand corner. T2 is the right hand corner. And T3 is the back back corner. The back might be hard to get to. You might want to put your tray out. Yeah, it may be. Yeah, we may have to move the tray up a little bit so we can actually reach it all. Yep. So, uh, uh, right here. free up the joints. And then teach a conveyor drop location. So let's say you're picking it up. Uh, and then I drop off the part. Look at that. So the way you teach it, the T1, T2, T3, defines how it progresses through the pallet. In your help, you'll see, again, if you go to help pallet and then example, it'll show you how it progresses through the pallet. Now I'm gonna come around and look at your code and see that you got the right uh, the right code in there for the. Yeah, maybe you want to go like this. Yeah, like, I, I think I can get it this way. Like this. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, that should be good. The other thing too is it doesn't have to be, uh, in my code, it doesn't have to be T1, T2, T3. It could be corner one, corner two, corner three. The way I, I define, I can say corner two, corner three, corner one. Again, the way I put it in my code also defines how it progresses through my palette. So after I jump to palette number one, I wanna jump to, uh, uh, I'll just call it, uh, box six location or a P, PP4. And I'll free the joints.
Uh, so one is corner one, corner two, corner three, or corner one, corner two, corner three. Mm -hmm. Basically, I, I need all four corners of the pallet. I could cheat and only use three. Okay. It doesn't have to be four. Uh, the tray doesn't have to be. Everybody always has a tray squared to the robot. It could be. Uh, it could be at an angle. It doesn't have to be a perfectly square tray. It could be. Oped on a, uh, a diamond-shaped pallet, if it has, if, if you want it to be, it could be a pallet that's not perfectly flat. It could be a pallet that steps up. So if my z-axis is higher, it'll step up through my program. So now, again, in low power mode, make sure you uh, run low power first, just to be safe, and teach a drop-off location. Maybe you want to drop off. Maybe you want to say this location here is the conveyor drop location or the the final part location. Now when you run, you're not going to run your main program. You're going to run your pallet test function. So make sure you run in low power mode. Okay, so uh, uh, hit OK, and then maybe it's, I think what he has is, I think he's got his U limited to minus, plus or minus 180. Okay. That doesn't have to be that way. It could actually, we could actually go for 45 minutes in one direction, but if he's got his U defined as that right. on his robot, then, so try it, try it now. So what's going to be weird about yours now is you're going to pick it up and it's going to spin about three times <laughs> and then drop it off. Okay, so go to type in, uh, just where you go uh, free up the joint here and then we'll go like maybe our drop off location is is back here. Okay. So teach that as conveyor drop or something or a uh, place location. Just pick any spot and say teach as a place. You know what's going to be weird is because I got one, two, and this one here. So somewhere between here and here it's going to start spinning. And then uh, jump after jump to cycle, pal one location cycle, hit enter and say jump. Uh, tray, whatever you call that last one. Please, okay. So now uh, hit the run button. And you want to run, just put a single posture in front of the power high, and that'll comment the power high. So you run low power okay. initially. Got now it. run it. Now run it, and then uh, select pallet, the function pallet, te or pallet set. So scroll up, it's going to tell us uh, there's an error there. We, uh, we didn't, cycle equals one. We want to get rid of this cycle. Oh, okay. So instead of cycle equals one, we just entered your cycle. We don't have to say one now because it's never going to increment above one. So just get rid of the cycle right here? No, uh, you want to still have cycle as an integer, but get rid of the cycle equals one. Okay. Because, so and let's see what the error is. Let's scroll up. You scroll here, it's, it's a little odd because it's a really tight window. Or just double click on it and see what it tells us. Go like this. Uh, there. Duplicate variable name, definition cycle. Uh, let's try and see what. Oh, we got oh, cycle got plus one up there. Plus yeah, plus yeah, plus yeah we got it twice. I just run it and see what happens. And then instead of function main, flex and start. All right, it looks safe. Let's run a little faster. <laughs> so get rid of...
Yeah, okay, now run it. So it looks like we may have to touch up our point one, point two. We probably moved a little bit or something. All right, so. Uh, pal, test, cycle energy, four cycles, jump drop. Okay. Um, well, right now we're just going jump pal one location T one. Uh, that should be just one, not T one. Oh, okay. Okay, so that says jump pallet one means which pallet is it? Pallet number one, and then T two should be cycle, not T two. So type in cycle. So that command says jump pallet number one, which is defined by this, pallet number one, and cycle is the place that we're indexing. So we're going up to one. So try it, uh, try it now and then. Uh, and then and then pull, that, pull this down from main to pallet test and start. Look at there. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And we may have moved the we may have moved the tray a little bit yeah. when uh <laughs> see so you gotta teach it right so it's perfect, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. <laughs> so if you want to touch up it looks like your last point back there was yeah, taught off a little uh, bit. Off. Or your tray moved uh, when it You know what I mean? Yeah. It looks like our whole tray is like this. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, because the, the starting points and the drop are good. Yeah. Pretty good. You may have a project that comes up that, that you think that RS robot would work really great for. I could go to my simulator and I have my simulator now. So if you click on the simulator, put your cursor on the toolbar, you get that, that IntelliSense that pops up that says simulator. And now when I run my project, right now you'll see your robot on your simulator moving just like your, just like your robot is on screen. Because I have a ceiling robot, that's, that's mine right there. And I'm waiting five seconds and it looks like I got an error because I must have modified something. But I want you to go to simulator and then run the robot and see uh, the robot that you have on screen will match your robot. So that's really handy dandy because right now you guys already have this robot connected. What happens when you leave here and I don't have a robot there? And when you guys are ready with this, like, it'll, we're actually going to, it's almost like unplugging the robot and we're going to something else. So whenever you guys are ready to that, let me know and we'll do that. So I want you guys to see me moving the moving this uh, in and out. <coughs> now because I'm not actually connected to the robot, it's just some sample that I have there. I have to hit control and move the robot by hand. So instead of moving the robot by hand the way I did in my, with my actual robot, I hit the control button, select the shoulder, select the elbow, move the Z-axis up or down. And that's how I move the robot around if I want to teach it in the simulator. If you look at your uh, model on the left hand side right here where my cursor is at, it says model is G6551. Change robot, I click right there to change it. So I can select what model I want it to be. If I don't want it to be a G6551, I can select it to be a Let's see, a, not a G6, I can select a G10, 651. Hit OK. Restarting controller and it'll put the robot. So like I started this whole session, I said pick the, the robot model based on your weight requirements and base, based on your horizontal reach requirements. Now it's a G6, G10, 651, so it's a higher payload, the same reach. Now I want to move this around. I could go to my robot manager. Now because this guy is a little harder to move and see this X, Y, Z, and U, I could go to 
like SolidWorks, measure, set up solid, my SolidWorks coordinate system so it matches what my robot coordinate system is and define that. And now I, can, I may actually type in spots. So when you're using the simulator, I may actually go to point file and type in these locations by hand. And now when I run the robot, And I start it. Uh, but okay, so I got the limzy in here. Stop. I'll get rid of the limzy. So now instead of moving my robot, I'm actually moving a different robot that I selected a G10, 651 using the exact same points I had previously taught with my other robot uh, program. But in our case, if you're, at a, if you're at your desk and you have SolidWorks, you drop in a robot from SolidWorks inside your coordinate system, figure out my X, Y, Z, and U is for like a tray, and then run a cycle study based on uh, typing those points in my point file. Uh, and what's nice is I could pull that G, G10 uh, out, I could put an RS robot in. And do the exact same thing as long as my Z's and my can reach can reach all that all that point. But what I wanted the key the key thing I wanted you to remember is when you're using the simulator and this is something that doesn't just pop out at you when you get it is to move my robot around. You have to hit that control button on the left on the left side. Hit the control. It highlights the Z highlights the the joint like here like I'm doing right here, and then I get the robot to move. You know. So again, I have to hit the control, then highlight the joint. You guys see what I'm doing right here? If you guys want to do that yourselves right now, go to the simulator, select the model, change the robot models from a, a G3 to something else. It'll act like it's starting to another controller. Uh, move the robot around. I just want you to see it move the robot around because... Uh, I don't want you to leave here and say, how, man, how do we move that robot around like we were freeing up the joints? There's also, a, in, in help, there's a whole section on simulation that goes through a lot of detail. You could actually import uh, a conveyor. I could, I could have a library of grippers. If I want to put a gripper on there, I could have parts in there. You could do all kinds of stuff. So I think right now you connect, you're still connected right now. It's USB. You're still connected to this actual robot. So I move the robot on the screen. I can't move it on screen and it won't move here. Okay. So I have to pull this down and select one of the samples, uh, G6. Say yes. So now it's going to put a G6 robot there instead of your LS. So there you go. Now uh, now you're in a G6, not an LS robot. Uh, I can move, move that around and hit control and then grab a... So that... Matt, you, you were able to do that? Sweet. Thank <laughs> you.